Hey everybody! In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you a fun magazine transfer technique that my friend Kelly taught us at my recent Unwind art retreat. This technique is so fun and easy and a great way to get faces into your work if you don't particularly like to draw. But what I want to focus on after I show you the basic technique is showing you how to incorporate some of those larger images into cards. These are typically used with art journals and not cards, and you can see they're quite large. I did these prints on my 6x6 plate from some fashion magazines, but they do look good in the smaller format of a card. This is one that didn't work, <laughs> FYI. I'm going to talk about how this is kind of a tricky technique. But you can really make some fun cards when you combine this with your sentiment sets for either funny or snarky or sympathy cards or friend cards. It has a lot of possibilities. It's also fun, of course, in an art journal just as a background image or as a focal point for your journal. So I have my 5 by 7 plate today and you'll need just a glossy magazine page with a very high contrast photo. You want to make sure that there's a lot of light and dark and that every edge is clearly defined. But as you can see these are much larger than my plate. We're going to start with any black craft paint. It really doesn't matter. The important part is really the amount of paint that you put on your plate. There's sort of a Goldilocks amount that works really well. Very, very goopy paint does not work at all. It will actually obscure parts of your image. So you'll see me after I get paint on my plate, removing it with a dry brayer. You just want kind of a skim coat on there. But you also don't want it to dry before you put your magazine page down. It's a little bit tricky. And not every image will work. This is a trial and error technique. It depends on the ink in the magazine. It depends on how much paint you have. It depends on how long you apply pressure to the print. But once you get the hang of it and you're working with a single magazine, you're going to find that this is very, very addicting and fun. We had so much fun with it at retreat. So I've brayered over my image, I've pressed it down, and I'm just going to slowly peel the magazine page off. The magazine pages cannot be reused once you've done this technique because they are then covered with black paint. So these are a single use. Don't start with your favorite one in case it doesn't work out. I'll show you a couple fails <laughs> along with the successes. But you can see this image transferred beautifully to my gel press. Now before the next step, I want to make sure that this paint is dry. It's if you've gotten the right amount of paint, it's a very thin layer of paint that's left, and so it shouldn't take long to dry, even in my humid climate. But I like to just fan it off a little bit just to make sure I don't lose any of the detail. The next step is going to be adding colored paint for sort of a pop art look in the background. And during this phase, you also do not want too much paint. You're going to see in a later mistake that I made that places where there's too much paint, you won't see the ghostly magazine image in that. So I'm using my Lucas Krill paints. These are the fluorescent ones. I happen to love the way this looks. I love a pop art look anyway, but this fluorescent magenta and the fluorescent yellow just really speak to me. Now I'm doing the same thing here putting down paint on top of the dried image and then brayering it just to make sure it makes really good contact. I feel like I got a little bit too much paint on there, but we'll see. And then once that is done, you can lift it up and you can see, sure enough, I had way too much paint. 
and it didn't pick anything up. So you're going to get a lot of prints that look like that that you can use for backgrounds later on. But what's happening is when you have too much paint, the paper isn't making good contact with that ghostly magazine image. And so it's not able to lift that image off the plate. In order for that to happen, you need good adhesion between the paper and the image that is now on the bottom of that wet paint. So I recommend if you put too much paint on to start with, just get it, dry your brayer off on a scrap piece and then pick up the extra layer of paint and then you should have just the perfect amount of paint. And you'll be in that mode because that's what you need to do with the black paint as well. But you always get many, many opportunities to fix a mistake in gel printing. So just make sure that you are rubbing it and getting a good adhesion between the paper and the image that is underneath. And now you can see that worked perfectly. So I didn't have to fret. And I have a great image of this girl and enough black on the page that you can really see a well-defined face and image. So here's another one. This isn't as high contrast, obviously. It's a color photo or has more color in the photo. You want to sort of avoid photos that have a lot of detail in the background because that really won't show up. So I'm brayering the black paint on again. As I said, it really doesn't matter what brand of black acrylic paint you need. Don't worry that you have to need some, you know, high-end acrylic. You really don't. And now with the dry brayer, I'm removing some paint and evening that out. And this is like a Forrest Gump technique. You never know what you're going to get. I actually tried a few images including the John Wayne cowboy images that were from a cowboy magazine and not from this fashion magazine. And I found that those did not work at all. There's just something about the ink or the paper that the magazine is printed on or the process that they use that doesn't work for this technique. So you just have to experiment and see which magazines work the best. We found that fashion magazines gave us the best results. They had, first of all, they had high contrast images, which was great. But it seems like the ink in them just transfers better to the gel press. So things like Vogue, I'm using Harper's Bazaar here today, Elle magazine, those all worked great. So that's what I would look for when you're out magazine shopping, which I have to point out, I basically had to sell a kidney to buy like five magazines for today's video. <laughs> I, I haven't purchased magazines in a long time, and I'm sure that's why magazines are going out of business now, but it is very expensive to buy a magazine now. I mean, I was not expecting that. So I'm sure the people at Walgreens were like, whoa, we're having a good day in the magazine department today because... I spent a lot of money on magazines, and then I tore them up and <laughs> threw most of them in the trash. So, with the recycle, I'm not a monster. Okay, now this is the sample where you can see how I had like a little bit too much pink paint up at the top, and I'm trying to remedy that by brayering it and seeing if it'll dry a little bit. But at the end of the day, I had too much paint there, and so I'm going to lose detail there just on that part of the face. I even tried pulling from the other side, but see how it's obscured? It's fine. It's going to look great in an art journal. But what you need to take away from this is the paint that you're picking up the print with needs to be very, very even. You don't want little clumps where there's too much paint, like the yellow down here and the pink. So, and you can see where it's still on my plate along with the, the ink from the magazine. So I'll try another one. This has a very fun print dress. I think it's probably a little bit too busy for really transferring detail, but the patterns are so bold, I figured I'd try. And these girls with this dark hair against a light background seems to work really, really well. The 5x7 and the 6x6 plates are 
seem to be about the right size for these large images that are in fashion magazines. They really are large. I mean, you can hold some of these ads up to your own head, and the face would be exactly the same size. So, ooh, that came out pretty. I had a little extra paint up at the top, so I'm just going to wipe that off with my finger. But that's really pretty. You can't really see too much detail in her dress, but you get just the hint of what this woman looks like, and it's really pretty cool. So I'll add my Holy Trinity colors again and try to pick that one up. And again, dry the brayer and remove. And then we'll see how this one did. It's always such a surprise. It's not like baking or anything else you do, or even stamping, where you can see immediately. There's so much mystery about pulling a gel print. I just love it. But when you start to see that your plate is super clean when you're pulling the print, you know you have a successful magazine transfer. So I still have a little extra paint at the top. I'm not going to worry too much about that because that is a very clean print. So you can see her face and how beautiful that is. So here are some examples of how even large images like this work in a card setting and some creative ways to combine them with sentiments to make those images really be the star of the show. One tip for you, this technique does work with Distress Oxide ink too. So if you have a black soot Distress Oxide ink pad, you can substitute that for your black acrylic paint. Thanks so much for watching.